This video is brought to you by Holocasa. Our tool transforms independent local real estate agents to global real estate agents. Create your own profile for free and get contacted by international investors. Sign up with the link in the description. Hello and welcome everyone to our 93rd session of Holocasa. My name is Michael and today I'm talking to Paulo Lopez from the Algarve in Portugal. Paulo is originally from Germany. He is also from Portugal. He speaks various languages, has uh, around 20 years of experience and is an expert in the real estate sector down in the Algarve of Portugal. Paulo, thank you so much for your time. Uh, once again, I'm really always happy to talk to you um, and you sharing your knowledge about the Algarve. Um, please introduce yourself to our audience and uh, tell them who you are. Thank you very much, Michael. At first, thank you for your, for the invitation again. I hope I will be the hundredth <laughs> of your podcasts uh, as well with some other themes. Uh, I'm very happy that you now live in this beautiful country, Portugal, and uh, have uh, find the love to the surf in uh, Costa Caparica. Uh, I know that I was a little bit uh, uh, responsible for that, so I'm very, very happy and proud of that. Uh, and so I welcome you in again in my country. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, um, give us a quick overview of um, your journey uh, towards real estate, um, how everything started for you. Yeah, so um, I, I come 2004 to Portugal um, uh, because of uh, a decision, of a family decision that we take together with my wife uh, to come to live in the country which I belong to. Um, uh, <laughs> I was born in Germany, so I speak very good uh, German, uh, sometimes better than Portuguese. Um, so we come in 2004 and um, I worked in a, in a paper um, at first and then by a coincidence I started in project management with uh, some um, project management companies from Germany, uh, Accumulata and uh, Euroactive, uh, the one from Munich, the other one from Ulm. And then we started with uh, supermarkets, German supermarkets, etc. in 2006 here in the Algarve. Algarve is... Um, the most beautiful place to live. Uh, I can say, I always say to my friends in Germany and all around the world, that if um, the, um, if heaven uh, is uh, like something, then the Algarve is very, very close to that. Uh, and uh, and I con can confirm that every day. Perfect. By, by the way. And so, yeah, please go ahead. So as I start 2006 in the in the real estate, we start with our company 2008, uh, 2007, sorry, uh, with Casa Iberia, with a project which we wanted to to develop all over Portugal and all over the the peninsula Iberica. That's the reason why we call it Casa Iberia. But uh, the the strong part of our company is really the the property. Uh, in the Algarve, the second property or the holiday uh, property in the Algarve. By the way, we have as well investment situations in Porto and Lisbon. But uh, today we will talk about the Algarve and I will give you a better view and your guests about the Algarve and what's the reason why people come to Algarve living and buying properties. Absolutely. Um... Exactly. Um, we are always talking a lot about the Algarve, Algarve, Algarve. I think uh, for the audience, especially the international audience, it's very interesting to maybe guide us through along the Algarve, uh, along the coast, say where it starts, what for cities are there, what for places are there. Um, can you give us an overview there, just geographically, yes. um, to get a good idea about the Algarve? Okay, uh, I think we have to start with two of the most important words in the Algarve, which is Sotavento mm -hmm. and Barlavento. Sotavento divides the Algarve from the middle to the east uh, to Spain, from Faro to Spain. And the Barlavento is from, you can say, Albufera to the west coast uh, till Algezur. Um, the inner, the inner center of the Algarve is uh, in between Faro and Portimao. You can say that is the, the heart of the Algarve, mm -hmm. where you have most uh, of the, the tourism, most of the people living the whole day, uh, the whole year. But Lagos and Tavira uh, are a bit out of this pocket, mm -hmm. but still a very attractive cities. Mm -hmm. 
So I think we can start by the east from, from the Spanish corner, mm -hmm. where we have councils, which is the one Castro Marie and Villarreal Sant Antonio. Mm -hmm. Castro Marie is uh, in Alcuti, mm -hmm. sorry, Alcuti is uh, more the mountain and river sides mm -hmm. in the north of the Algarve before you come to the Alentejo area. Mm -hmm. It's a very uh, rustic area with a lot of uh, agriculture, uh, people living from that industry, from the agriculture and from the wood industry, and uh, low tourism. Mm -hmm. So you can make their nature tourism. Uh, having there a house, uh, you are still 20 minutes away from the coast mm -hmm. or from the beaches from Villarreal Sant Antonio. Mm -hmm. Villarreal Sant Antonio is called the Villarreal. It's uh, the name says King's Village, mm -hmm. uh, Sant Antonio, uh, and the beach there is Monte Gordo, mm -hmm. which is very well known because of his casino mm -hmm. and the border to the Spanish border. Mm -hmm. We have there the main entry to the Algarve mm -hmm. when you come from Spain. Villarreal Sant Antonio is more the Spanish clients mm -hmm. usually, Alcuti as well, and Castro Mani. So in this area, you have mostly Spanish uh, tourism uh, and people coming from there. But it was changing during the last years. Uh, every time more French and more English and more Portuguese and more Germans mm -hmm. are coming to that place. But it's still a niche. Mm -hmm. it's foreigners are still a niche in that, in that area. When you come then to the next uh, council is Tavira. Mm -hmm. Tavira is one of the biggest councils. I uh, think it's the third biggest council in the Algarve. Mm -hmm. Has a big history, um, very, uh, very strong um, allocated to the mm -hmm. salt production and to the, um, mm -hmm. to the fishing industry, uh, but as well to the agriculture, as it is a flat area, flatland mm -hmm. area, and uh, you don't have beaches there. You have the islands in front mm -hmm. of because it's it is part of the delta of Ria Formosa, mm -hmm. which is one of the biggest reefs that we have in Europe. That's the Praia do Baril. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. So um, you have there when you want to go to the um, to the beaches, mm -hmm. uh, you go from Tavira with the boat, mm -hmm. and then you have the islands in front where you can then go to the beaches, mm -hmm. or you go from Santa Lucia or from some other small ports, which are behind the reef mm -hmm. and go then to there. Perfect. Uh, I'm just sharing the, the map, uh, just that you know as well, so um, yeah. the audience can also look at it. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Then you have, um, after T and Tavira is, is a historical uh, city. I think it's one of the oldest, or if not the oldest city in the Algarve. Mm -hmm. Uh, before the um, the the uh, Bedouins and Arabs came to to the uh, to the half island uh, of uh, Peninsula Iberica, mm -hmm. there were the Romans uh, and the Phoenicians mm -hmm. making here um, commercial um, interaction. Mm -hmm. Tavira has a lot of history and it has a very very nice uh, uh, old uh, historic uh, city. Mm -hmm. Vera, you have uh, the designated fishing industry area. A lot of French people have bought there in the last years um, the small old houses in the center of uh, mm -hmm. Oyao because it's uh, very cozy. It's a uh, mm -hmm. city. Uh, you can't go there with a car. You, you can only go by bicycle or by, by a moped or by oh, foot. Nice. So people love mm -hmm. that. It's really very, very narrow, the, the roads mm -hmm. in, in uh, Oliao, in the old city. Um, but Oliao has the tradition of uh, fishing industry, mm -hmm. strong fishing industry. You have tunas, um, the tuna industry uh, is, well, they have big cages in front of the coast mm -hmm. where they uh, where they produce the tuna from, from starting on. So it's... Uh, it's a good form to maintain the, the, the species as they are making aquaculture mm -hmm. uh, and using tuna for the, the, uh, for the, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. 
Then you will have um, Sombras del Portel, which is in the mountains behind uh, Tavira and behind uh, Faro. Uh, Sombras del Portel is three, but as well um, a nice place to live. And a lot of foreigners have bought there because it was cheaper in the time and it's still cheaper than buying on the coast. Mm -hmm. But you have uh, beautiful sea view from there because you are building in the mountains okay okay so you you have a 180 degree sea view sometime and, and that pushes the people to to that to that side on the other mountain area is fresher than the mm -hmm. time a lot of foreigners like to have it not so so hot mm -hmm. and so they they buy as well in this areas because of that and you have bigger thinker bigger levels yeah. and lots and and pieces that you can can buy there for culture wise for what can you um cultivate there what's um what is working very well mm -hmm. from the fertile soil and this area uh at at the moment um well it was still the orange mm -hmm. orange and uh, citrus uh, plants, mm -hmm. but now they are coming with the uh, with the um, red fruit mm -hmm. uh, industry, like um, uh, that small uh, fruits. Um, I don't know the, the the right name, but it's like blueberries, okay. berry berries. Yeah, okay. The, the berry fruit. Strawberries, uh, blueberries, uh, cranberries. Strawberries. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cranberries, exactly. Things like that. They they are coming very strong to that area, but it's still um designated for cork okay and the cork in this area is uh, has a better quality than the cork in the alentation mm -hmm. the reason is very simple i i never i didn't know that before i spoke with sandra sandra is the owner of uh, pelcor mm -hmm. it's uh, the most famous um company for cork uh clothing mm -hmm. and uh, cork umbrellas and cork accessories like uh, or the mobile phone mm -hmm. app uh, and other things that she produced. And uh, the reason why the cork is better there is because they don't, they, uh, in, in the Alentejo, you have the big cork trees in the middle of flat land. And then the, the machines go there and they dig out the, the, the ground mm -hmm. to, to put them the cements on it for the, for the yeah. seed. Or the yeah, and uh, here the mountains are s with such an inclination that they can't move the the mm -hmm. dirt, and so the dirt does, doesn't go into the air. It doesn't go into the tree ah. because the cork is every year growing, so it's more dense because of less humidity, mm -hmm. and you don't have the impouring uh, in yeah. in the cork. It's a small. People decide to have a higher quality in, or to say that the quality there is better. Do you, yeah. if if I if then you if, have... if I may, uh, um, one more question concerning yeah. the agriculture. Um, I heard that there are um, cannabis companies. There's one big one from Canada doing and cult in the... cultivating in Portugal, T Tilray, I yeah. think. And um, yeah. I, I was yeah. wondering if you know anything about it. If that's also a region. That's Alentejo. Okay. When we talk about the Alentejo one day, then I will explain okay. you that. It's uh, on the on the side of these biggest um, uh, art, artificial lake that we have in mm -hmm. Europe. Um, and uh, there on the side, they produce now uh, the, the cannabis plants for medicine mm -hmm. reasons, as mm -hmm. we know. Uh, so um, we have then Faro coming mm -hmm. back to, to to explaining because there are still more places. Mm -hmm. of go, the go, go. Yeah, to absolutely. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 don't don't need to. Uh, Faro is um, the the capital of the Algarve. Um, it has uh, uh, the same quantity of population like Portimao, but it has more fluent population because it's the the university place of the Algarve University. Mm -hmm. uh, she's uh, located in Faro. 
and you have a lot of travelers as well because there is the international airport so everybody who comes to far to to the algarve by flight has to pass by mm -hmm. by far okay and uh, faro is uh, the capital and uh, faro is known for um, for the uh, orange tomato mainly agriculture industry mm -hmm. but it's slowly coming as well an IT industry there okay slowly not not really big but it's coming slowly because um, I always um, I was working on a project but that can be a theme for for another day not for today because uh, I think the 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 economy in the Algarve has to change we cannot live only from the tourism as we are living yeah. now and from the foreigners buying properties we have to create a second industry and I think the creative creative industry and the IT industry is the next step to do in the Algarve mm -hmm. because we do not have that density of population like other areas in Portugal mm -hmm. and we have here as well the same fiber optic technic uh, on place that you can work here easily uh, with the internet and with all what is mm -hmm. needed but that's for I think for the next for the hundred podcast, <laughs> yes. if you want. <laughs> okay, so Faro is, as I said, is the capital. It's the the brain of of the Algarve. Mm -hmm. The um, the decisions were taken uh, mostly there for the Algarve uh, in the airport in the the university. Um, they have as well a football team uh, which is now playing in the first league again, which is great. So we have two clubs one in Portimao and the other in Faro playing in the first league, which attracts a little bit of uh, soccer uh, and football. Uh, Enthusiasts, like yeah, and also to, um, to obviously out. driving driving a little bit of a, of a different uh, economy as well. You know, I always like diversifying the, 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 the diversifying the sources of GDP is always important, yeah. Exactly. Then we have uh, the richest council, um, which uh, attracts millions of people every year, uh, which is uh, Lole, better known for his golden triangle, as we call it, which is uh, Quinta do Lago, Valdo Lobo, and Vila Mora. They are the three highest valued resorts in Portugal. Quinta do Lago can be eventually one of the highest valued resorts in, in the South European. Uh, area. Mm -hmm. uh, you have their square meter prices from eight to ten thousand, sometimes fifteen thousand, for some properties in Quinta do Lago. Just uh, sorry, here um, Quinta do Lago. I don't find it. It's it's uh, part of Lule. It's a resort. It's it's in okay. Lule. It's a tourist touristic resort, uh, which has very high valued houses. Okay, got it. Uh, I can tell you, Baricello has their house. Uh, uh, there is a road named by the famous uh, Brazilian Formula One driver, Ayrton Senna. Uh, a lot of uh, big football players from the Premier League uh, have their house. Um, so a lot of, a lot of uh, high-end clients and very rich people mm -hmm. uh, have their house and live there because the security in Portugal is still... Uh, one of the biggest reasons that people come mm -hmm. to Portugal by the sun and by the mm -hmm. sea and it's that you can be on the road uh, walking around the mm -hmm. city uh, at midnight and you don't need to have a gun pocket or uh, yeah it is uh, absolutely fear yeah. that you will be attacked yeah. uh, it's a very very secure country the third most secure country in the world so it's so statistically and 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 there i just see it on the map so we have in fact a very nice let's say um it's it's a very nice circle half circle from quateira alman yeah. then yes. going yeah there's actually only the the motorway and then going to montenegro like oh, going to faro down so you have the entire yeah. green spot here being yeah. being inhabited by the rich ones let's put it that way yes. okay so so you yes. have the san lorenzo yes. golf course where we have valle de lobo resort and this is like where the high society where you exactly. can find the madonnas of the world i assume okay exactly. okay. Exactly. 
So you can say that uh, we have um, only in that in that small corner, Pinto de Lago has three golf courses. Mm -hmm. Valdo Lugo has another three golf courses. Mm -hmm. Then you have Villa Mora with six golf courses. You have Villa Sol with another two golf courses. So you have uh, 12 golf courses mm -hmm. in, a, in a radius of 10 okay. kilometers, 10, 15 okay. kilometers. Uh, Okay, got it. Yeah. It's it's there's a lot of trees and a lot of nature, yeah, with with a small ball as a reason for it. <laughs> but but it's um it's really for people who like to be private to have their privacy, uh, privacy, yeah. money to spend for that privacy. Yeah. Um, they are better located here than in Ibiza or in Mykonos, yeah. uh, because uh, here nobody goes into that resort. It's it's closed, but the beach is still free for everybody. Okay. okay. That is something what what uh, de defines Portugal as well as a, as a different country. No beach is uh, permitted mm -hmm. to be blocked by privates and having a private beach. All beaches are open to public. Yeah. Okay? And I see you have a, like there another beach of, let's say, maybe 20, 30 kilometers from uh, yes. Cavazos, from Quateira down to Praia yeah. do Faro or even even further down yes. without even yeah. a single let's say river uh, closing it so yeah. even if it yeah that's yeah. fantastic okay and uh, sometimes they they ride there with horses as mm -hmm. well on that beach um it's a lole is really the the most most uh, valued uh, council and has the um, the highest h highest prices in in the mm -hmm. Algarve uh, by square meter. I think I can later on explain a little bit how we come to the prices, but uh, I don't think that it's that the main point today. It's more to explain what is mm -hmm. the Algarve and where you can live and why you'll have to live in that area or in mm -hmm. the other area. So um, continuing the next uh, council is Albufera. Mm -hmm. Albufera is a touristic hotspot. Mm -hmm. Um, the construction density in this council is very mm -hmm. high. Uh, people like it because of the old bars and the small mm -hmm. beaches. Uh, and uh, well, it is mainly English, mainly English and Portuguese uh, living there with the second mm -hmm. house. One of the reasons why a lot of Portuguese have their second home is because they can rent it out in the summertime mm -hmm. as well, thirds. And so generate income for themselves um, to pay the the costs of of the yeah. property. Um, the English people were the first one coming over to be in this um, in this place. Uh, they built a lot there, um, so um, it is mainly influenced by by English investors, Albufera as it is yeah. today, uh, and as well Spanish yeah. investors. Okay. The next council is Silvish. Uh, Silvish is um, the the oldest council, you can say. It has was the um, the center of um, the center of the Arab culture. Silvish is uh, before Portimao, still. Is before Portimao. Okay. Yes, it's uh, after Albufera and Lole. It has a border to ah, Lole Silvish. Council and. Okay, Alcatraz. I see a little bit on top there. The the okay, got okay. it. Yeah. And there you have a very old castle. Very often uh, people go there to to visit the castle. The castle is in very very good uh, mm -hmm. shapes, good um, quality. The industry here is mostly mm -hmm. agriculture. Uh, you have one beach which is Armasera. Uh, it's a long mm -hmm. Villa Vita. Um, no, Villa Vita is 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 in the next. Count, mm -hmm. Sorry, but uh, Silvish uh, has mostly orange uh, fruit uh, and as well uh, um, these uh, mm -hmm. berry in this, um, fruit, a red. They they call it red mm -hmm. fruits. Okay, it's uh, um, all all type of of red fruits that you today use as power fruit for the for the mm -hmm. for the breakfast of mm -hmm. drinks. Uh, so. That's the mm -hmm. main, the main uh, production there in that area. It's, it's a very, very, uh, um, very good place to plant any type of 
salads of uh, other yeah. other things you can get twice times a year production of salad okay in the area okay because of water yeah. that you have from the yeah. side yeah. the yeah. the artificial lakes and as well the ground which is very yeah. good okay yeah. the next point is uh, lagoa lagoa is where i live mm -hmm. uh, so where we are showing this video mm -hmm. now from um, it has the small fisher uh, uh, city of Carvoero, very well known uh, by the Germans because of the of the uh, singer Udo Jürgens. Mm -hmm. In the late 80s, it was um, a hot spot for Germans coming over. Uh, they uh, open here restaurants, they start building uh, resorts uh, like Carvero Club and others. And it's after the area of Lole and Villa Mora, the fourth more expensive area, but has for me the big advantage this, that the density of construction here existing. It's the, the plots have to be minimum of 2000 square meters mm -hmm. for a villa. Uh, for example, in Albufera, you have sometimes 400, 500 or 300 square meters for to build a villa in that plot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you have the whole year activity because most of the people who live in Carvero are people coming over with 50, round about yeah. 45, 50. And they stay the whole year. Mm -hmm. They go in the summer back to the families, but the rest of the year they stay here, nice. or they are in pension, or they have their incomes from other private uh, resources. Um, it's a very wealthy uh, council, one of the wealthiest mm -hmm. in the Algarve after Lole, the second mm -hmm. wealthiest. Um, and well, with 14 or 16 beaches. Wow. Uh, very very nice to to visit because you can during two weeks you can every day visit a different a different yeah. beach and the most beautiful beach uh, or in between the 25th most beautiful beaches of the world is Praia de Marinha which is in this in this mm -hmm. council the next thing is uh, is Portimao as, as a council um, I think a very sub valued council because you have the Arad River the Arad River comes um, or goes in in a, in a, into the sea uh, in between Ferragudo, which is from the Council of Lagoa, uh, and Portimao on the other side of the riverside. They make their um, boat uh, um, boat races, the F1 boat race, uh, normally every year. Uh, and Portimao is as well the council which has the motor speedway for the Formula One. They come back now again. Okay. This, yeah, now in um, April, I think, or May, no, uh, April is uh, MotoGP. And in May comes the, the Formula One back because of the pandemic and their cal calendar that they can't go to other places. And it was last year, I think, the only, uh, uh, the only, a spectacle of Formula One with the public okay. viewing with people. Um, minimum in Europe, so I so I, I understand mm -hmm. or I know. But my son, he knows better about the Formula One than me. When it was the time of Michael Schumacher, it was me that knows more. But now it's his time, and I know less than than him. They have been there last year when I had COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I bought the tickets, and they were on the place, not me. But okay, uh, Potimao. Potimao has um, is the the you can say the industrial part of of um, of uh, the Algarve, mm -hmm. but uh, main tourism services, um, all the um, all the services in around what has to do with uh, with the ma maintenance with uh, uh, production. Uh, so all around Portimao is the place where most people live during the winter mm -hmm. time. So we have uh, Faro goes a little bit down because the the the, the students go mm -hmm. away. Okay, but in Portimao during the winter time you have 
a high density normal city living uh, with everything running normal um, than uh, more than in the other in the other places which depend much more from the mm -hmm. tourism. Uh, Portimao has a more diversified uh, industry. It lives as well from the tourism like every other country like every other council, but it has different parts like I say the, the motor speedway, then it has uh, the uh, exhibitions mm -hmm. on the the big arena. Uh, they have agriculture, they have wine industry, uh, which is now in all the Algarve coming uh, more, the, the wine mm -hmm. production, which I, I like the, that it is because we have so much sun and it, it gives a re really different and very good mm -hmm. taste to the Algarve. Uh, being by taste, when you come to the Algarve um, and you go out of the, of, the, of the flight on the airport, on the gateway, you smell something which is only on the Algarve. It's because of a plant which grows up in the hills, in the mountains of, of the Algarve. Uh, it, the name is Ishteva, and it's a plant which has a lot of oil. Until today, nobody uses that, and I don't know how you can use it, but it smells like moshus. For the perfume industry, it can be, I sh I'm sure it can be good. But it's one of the reasons why the fires in the Algarve explodes on the side of the eucalyptus. This plant has a lot of uh, energy to, to burn because of that strong oil. It's like... Um, yeah. Hearts, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like wax, like the... Uh, I, I forgot the name as well yeah. in, the, in English, but it's, it's the wax from the trees. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so very, very, very strong in the... A lot of potential okay. for fire. Then behind of Portimao, you have Monchique. Monchique is uh, as well a subvalued area, in my point of view. It is the highest point on the Algarve, the foyer. Um, you have there um, very nice places like Caldes de Monchique, which is, uh, was used by the Romans as, as a thermal mm -hmm. bath or a place for recovering, for leisure, for being mm -hmm. well. Um, our fairs uh, and all that mountain roads that you have there with the small restaurants on the side mm -hmm. of the road, it's very, very cozy and very nice. The Algarve have to visit the mountains as well. And that is, for me, one of the biggest advantages in the Algarve, that you have a big strip on the coastline mm -hmm. where you can live and, and work and, and, and have very nice time. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you are fed up from the coast, you can go climbing to the mountains. You can go uh, making your, uh, uh, with a motorbike or with a bicycle, um, mounting the, 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 the mountains. We have a lot of trials for, um, for BTT mm -hmm. uh, and uh, for other sports. Mm -hmm. And there is as well a foot track that you can walk from the west to the east and from the east to the mm -hmm. west always through the mountains and through the the forest. Mm -hmm. So Monchik is the place to to visit. It has the a perfect water it calls uh, which has is pH neutral. Mm -hmm. Very good. And uh, well, a place to visit I have mm -hmm. to say. And I just uh, uh, checked as well parallel um, yeah. it's like a 30 minutes drive to Portimao and also kind of a 30 minutes drive to Algezur. So you are very yes. flexible. It's not like a three hours drive um, in order no. to get to the to the to the um, to the coast. Okay. And you have like a mountain line from uh, Monchik uh, from Algezur until uh, Castelmarie and Alcoti, which is the backside of the Algarve, mm -hmm. where you can have a lot of surprises with small castles with uh, restaurants on the roadside, where you can eat for six euros, five euros which is incredible in Europe, eating for that yeah. price. You can't buy the supermarket uh, for to, to cook. And, and, uh, and this is also the uh, region where you serve this octopus with the sweet potatoes, I assume, correct? Oh my yes. God, this is... Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. yes. Sweet potatoes is uh, was something that I didn't know before I come to, to the Algarve. And since I'm here in the Algarve, I have to say it's it's a really, really nice and good Absolutely. food. Absolutely. So now we come to Lagos. Um, Lagos is um, 
a lot of English, Irish, and Germans, mm -hmm. uh, Dutch um, as well, because it's less density of construction. Mm -hmm. Now, in the last years, they have built a lot. But before, it was a really very, very um, less density mm -hmm. place. Now they have built uh, a mixture of apartments and, and villas, but it's still the place where is a hotel called Cascade, where all the football teams like Manchester City, Leverkusen, uh, Manchester United, uh, Chelsea, Dortmund, I think Bayern has, I don't know if Bayern have been here, but Dortmund I know, Köln, coming over to train here on, the, on that pitch because it's a UEFA certified uh, football mm -hmm. pitches uh, for to for the for the training and for for games and uh, very very nice place uh, the hotel and this area of Lagos has as well a big sandy beach which is called Maya Praia uh, I didn't refer myself to the name of the beaches in in the different councils because I think it's better to mm -hmm. explain more what is the behind of the councils and Lagos has a big in a big history with um, the Portuguese uh, explorers. Uh, most of the boats of the explorers have gone from mm -hmm. Lagos, and not not only from Sagres. Mm -hmm. um, so Lagos was as well the main uh, marketplace for slaves. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have to say the things like they are. So there is a lot of a lot of history, a lot of old buildings from that time, from the the the, the companies and the commercials who have uh, made commercial with India, with other countries, who are coming with the species mm -hmm. to to that place, and well, the owners of that uh, places, um, they make commercial with that, and then they build the big houses in in the mm -hmm. city, in the old city. It's very very nice to visit. Um, in the behind of, of Lagos, um, or from Lagos on to the west coast, uh, it starts then the nature protected area of the Algarve, which is then in the council of Vila do Bispo, known more by Sagres. Sagres is the most west, southwest point of Europe. Uh, it's like a dent in the sea in the Atlantic. Uh, known as well by a lot of surfers, because if the wind comes from the west, the the waves are good on the one side of Sagres, and if the wind comes good from east, the waves are well on the other side. So they only have to move one kilometer from one place to the other one to have waves. So a lot of a lot of surfers uh, live in this area. And um, all the area of Villa do Bispo uh, is part of the Parque de, Nature, de Natura 20, uh, 2000. And it's a European protected area uh, for to maintain the fauna and all the vegetation uh, of plants and birds, which are only seen here in this area. This goes until Algezur. What makes me, and I will eventually uh, say that now because uh, I don't have so often the possibility to express myself online, what I want to tell to the people who come with caravans to these places is respect and protect the nature as we Portuguese mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. Don't go with the caravans everywhere where, where is a road or a dirt road and let your shit there. Sorry, because it is really like that. Sorry, Michael, that I'm saying that here in this, but it is part of mm -hmm. the Algarve. We had an invasion in the last years of caravans. It's not because of the surf. It's because of free living. Yes, I understand this free living. I was young as well some years ago. <laughs> Uh, and we like all to have our liberty and freedom, but freedom cannot be the reason to destroy the Absolutely. nature. And that, that is the point that I want to let here in this as well. We Portuguese, we love freedom, we love liberty, we love our country, we love visitors 
come to us. We are very hospitality, but please respect the places where it's written no caravans. It's to don't go mm -hmm. there with caravans. Either to sleep, either to let the oil of the old caravans in the middle of nature protected area, mm -hmm. because the cars are so old that they are, they have oil everywhere. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, please respect this area and it is because and it is our kids want to see them no, and, well. and it is important to mention that the entire area as you said like starting from i think even bulgao if, yeah, if i pronounce it correctly yeah. and then sagres again going up to you know to Bordera, yeah and actually uh, up to aljazur and then odesej and then even yeah. even i think even up to uh villa villa nova uh, de Mifonge, I pronounce it correctly there you are like there are people still like camping and it's just not allowed like just just respect it yeah and um and sometimes unfortunately it's the same people who then you know on the on a different occasion are the biggest proponents of you know no yeah. be it green energy or being being it uh, being economic exactly. economically friendly and stuff so you know like Stop cherry picking uh, your life uh, whenever it suits you. Uh, like you know, Perfect. own yes. own own it and and be very conscious about also um, the local rules and uh, and mother mother nature. That's the most important thing. Yes. And then, well, putting that theme now on the side, uh, but I think it's really like you say, not cherry picking only that. What is for your advantage? Do it like a responsible person and respect all the others because they respect you as well. But then we have the Council of Al Jazeera, um, which is as well um, a very nice place, very green, uh, lives mostly from um, local agriculture, but as well now from uh, some innovative industries. For example, we have uh, one company which I, I like very much. They are there a long time ago. They called FF Solar. Mm -hmm. Um, they make it's a German, and a lot of Germans and hippies come in the time of the where cannabis uh, was uh, created at home um, to that place um, and uh, live there. And um, from them, they started to create a little bit of diversity of uh, of things happening, especially in the green industry. Mm -hmm. And so we, they were the first or one of the first in Portugal making uh, in, installing solar panels for photovoltaic for the houses which were built in the in the middle mm -hmm. of nowhere where no no energy was uh, allocated by the by the normal um, by the normal electric uh, or electricity service now is everything uh, with uh, canalization with water with electricity in that area so it's not uh, anymore like it was uh, in 20 or 30 years mm -hmm. ago but um, this i want only to say that this area of al Jazeera is a hot spot at the moment for mm -hmm. surfer for people for digital nomads um, i know a lot of them they are living now there in uh, in houses in apartments uh, during the winter time in surfing there every yeah. day because the conditions of the weather is so good yeah. for them so you can say all this west coast which is the protected coast uh, is being used a lot by surface but uh, on the other side the diverse of the metal is um, as well a lot of surface who, who don't respect that what i explained before you cannot be on a protected beach with an old VW Kastenwagen, which is uh, dropping oil from the morning till the night on, on the beach side, uh, or because there's no open toilet, um, letting your pieces in, in the middle of, of, of the place where the birds put their yeah. eggs on. So if, if you are two or three, okay, but if you are 10, 20,000 mm -hmm. in, in, in a week, it's yeah. different yeah and that was that was a, certainly a problem in the last years now the the police and the the portuguese authorities have created as well a catalog of um, of contraordinations mm -hmm. so they will now pay for uh unrespecting that the, the rules um and so 
be careful when you come with with a with a camping car. N nobody doesn't. Nobody says don't come. We say come, but respect in the same form the rules in my mm -hmm. country or in our country, like you respect in your Absolutely. country. Absolutely. I don't ask yeah. for more. Um. You, we talked uh, previously uh, uh, quickly about the cannabis thing. That's that's also exactly what you mentioned. That's also in this area in Algezur, correct? No, um, the I, I said it by by a joke. Ah. The or the older uh, generation, ah. my generation, okay, uh, and a bit older than me, uh, in the 17s, they discovered the Algezur area as a very laid back, okay. Open and free area and uh, um they they planted there nobody asks for anything you know and now that's restricted mm -hmm. um in all europe and we have a big cannabis production in uh, the alentejo and the alentejo on, okay. the, on the alkeva um on the alkeva lake for a canadian company mm -hmm. uh which produce cannabis for medicine reasons or for their big shop uh, filials in America and in California. Mm -hmm. And we can say we are really by the side of the drug dealers, the biggest uh, producers of cannabis at the moment. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's, it's interesting too, because it's still like, you know, it's a growing, uh, it's a growing business, a growing, growing economy. So yeah. it's always, it's very, I think it's, it's in a certain uh, way, it's definitely like something forward looking, uh, making like, I, th I think it's interesting that Portugal, Portugal definitely positions itself as such, because you have like mm -hmm. hemp and uh, uh, a lot of hemp products being, being pr produced and also the, um, the uh, pharmaceutical cannabis um, methodology uh, is definitely, yeah. I think, still quite undiscovered um, and there might there are a lot of very very um, uh, positive effects for a lot of people for a lot of um, for a lot of treatments so very also very interested or very interesting I think that you have like this interaction between Canadian Canadians going and well planting and cultivating uh, cannabis back, yeah. back in Europe. So that's that's very interesting. Well, the the the, the biggest areas in around the Alkeva is at the moment for uh, intensive production of olive and olive trees mm -hmm. and olive oils. The, the cannabis is a, is a is certain part, yeah. but it's not the I, biggest I, part I, of, of the plantation. Yeah. Uh, only to put that in, in relation yeah. to, to things, okay? okay? But it's right that uh, we have that big plantation, but it is certified. Mm -hmm. It has to be mm -hmm. certified. Not everybody can can plant now in his uh, yeah. in his like in California. They can do it. Uh, um, they can plant their own uh, cannabis plants in their mm -hmm. garden. Now they are allowed to do that. Uh, in Portugal, it's not because we are under European rules and as well our our under our national rules. But we can have planting for medicine yeah. reasons and if a company is certified for to use for medicine reasons they can plant in portugal but in a closed area which has no access to, yeah. to thirds so that this is not starting to be a private production yeah of cannabis everywhere and by the way um people have to be conscious that cannabis for medicine reasons can be mm -hmm. good but on the other side not used like it has to be used and ordered by a doctor or by medicine uh, it can have side mm -hmm. effects and the side effects are sometimes put in yeah. by side this uh, I, I tell it because um, in my family um, somebody uh, has done that uh, and because of uh, because of um, of mm -hmm. pain reasons uh and uh, then he lands in the hospital with an abc okay what is an abc with with a cerebral uh, uh infarct. Oh, okay 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 because it was used like uh, bonbons every time that okay. he has pain he, he yeah. puts a bonbon in okay so people have to be careful and to have to understand oh, that, that this is not absolutely or other other cases where it led to shots of uh, psycho, uh, psychophonic yeah. uh, uh, 
Sure. Sh- sh- schizophrenia, yeah. um, schizophrenic uh, yeah. um, uh, symptoms. Um, a quick overview on, uh, first of all, yeah. thank you so much for this entire, you know, walk through along the coast. It helped me a lot, to be honest, uh, even though I have been there myself, but it's still like, you know, very, very nice overview on the, on the uh, Algarve and on the coastal line. Um, you mentioned in between also um, some, let's say, nationalities um, and the way I kind of understood is like Germans, Dutch, um, Germans, okay. Dutch more or less like to- to- torn towards Lagos, maybe uh, in Portimao. Then you have Album Albufera, yeah. which is rather a hub for the uh, people from the UK. Um, I remember yeah. this one when I traveled there once, you have like a lot of um people in their retirement playing playing bool or the, their games uh, everyone uh, being dressed in white and and uh, living their life and then faro more or less like le- rather actually young university city more vibrant also direct access with the with the um with the airport um more fluctuation, more turnover, as in people living there, potentially a hep, um, kind of a tech hub for for digital nomads and for for people living dig- digitally. And then you have like Tav- Tavira and and, uh, and and Villanova towards towards Spain. While you also interestingly have like this high society directly close to Faro um, in mm-hmm. in the in in the spot. Um, with the Valdolobo resort and uh, yeah, around Quartela. Um, is there is that a good conclusion or did I miss anything on on the conclusion? No, it's, okay. it's that. Uh, it's 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 okay. Uh, I was looking here for to see how is the uh, percentage of um, of foreigners per uh, council, and uh, it's uh, really uh, crazy. Uh, I'm seeing that uh, here now for the first time. Um, in 2019, in Vilo Bispo, in that protected mm-hmm. area, where I said there are more surface and uh, IT mm-hmm. nomads in the now coming to, uh, 37.2% of the inhabitants are foreigners. Yeah, that's a lot. That's that's crazy. Yeah. Okay. But. But it can have as well something to do with the foreigners who are working in agriculture mm-hmm. at the moment. We have a lot of uh, uh, people from uh, Bangladesh, from uh, India coming mm-hmm. over, uh, working here on our agriculture, mm-hmm. like in uh, Germany, the Polish, or in English, in England, uh, the, 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 the Bulgarians or, or others coming from the East. Yeah. Um, so we have uh, as well a lot of people coming from outside working in the, in the, mm-hmm. um, in the agriculture mm-hmm. industry. So Albufera, for example, has 35.8%. Um, Odimira, which is uh, in Alentejo, uh, Aljazeera, uh, has 33.1%. Mm-hmm. Lagos, 32.1%. Aljazeera, 29.2%. Tavira, 25.5%. Loli, 25.4%. Lagoa, 21%. Lisbon, in comparison to all the others, 19.3%. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. And in Portimao, 18.4%. As I said, Portimao is a very uh, typical Portuguese city, mm-hmm. which has a, uh, a certain service for for uh, for hotels and hotel industry, mm-hmm. but it's more from the normal working, so there are more mm-hmm. Portuguese. And, but you can say every every fourth uh, in the Algarve is a, is a foreigner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which that's, gives us as well a cosmopolitan oh, understanding of, of the people, and that uh, is good for foreigners who want to live in Portugal. Lisbon, for example, is different in that point. Uh, Porto is different in that point because the people in Porto and in Lisbon, they are Portuguese and they mostly speak Portuguese. They speak mm-hmm. English, okay, but they have more the the link to a to a foreigner when they come for holidays and tourism. Mm-hmm. But not to stay and live there. And we, and, yeah, no, and we, and, and and what I wanted to say is that you know that's only like the ones without tourists. So you yeah. then have the tourist influx. So you feel like, you know, I, I next question would be okay. Is it uh, do do Portuguese people still feel 
comfortable with all the yeah with all because the other... it, it's look we, we uh, in the Algarve you have the Alentejo in between Lisbon and the Algarve. The old uh, people in the Algarve say always it's good to have the desert in between Lisbon and the Algarve because the desert makes a filter mm -hmm. that everybody can come down. Okay. Um, sometimes um, people uh, outside of the Algarve in Portugal, they do not understand why we, in the Algarve the people have a different mentality to mm -hmm. foreigners. We are open. We, we, we are. We are open. We are always open because we live mm -hmm. from the foreigners. This is the main industry that we have: receiving foreigners, treating foreigners, yeah. eating with them, prepare food for them, preparing houses for them, maintaining their pools. So this is the main what yeah. we do here. I'm, I'm sorry to say no, that, no, but it's the main that's thing. So, totally from, fair. That's totally fine. From what we live um, from. Quick overview, like a, kind of. Um, yeah touring cheering towards the prices is there any difference on along the coast from lagos to faro to to monte yes. yes. like along the coast is is there do do you see like can you say okay it's definitely more more expensive in lagos than in faro or it's less expensive or i don't know maybe also co comparing lagos portimao abu, abu Feira, and faro those big cities is there a certain price difference there is there is um the the thing is um when mostly uh, people um tell me when they come from from other countries that the prices in Portugal has raised up in the last years extremely, uh, they misunderstand or they do not understand that it was not only the prices who has gone up, it is the conditions to build a house have changed. We have today um, different um, energy certificates, the, the energy certificates to, to have, we have some building rules that we haven't had in the before and all that mm -hmm. costs money. The ground is more expensive because the demand mm -hmm. is high and there is no ground anymore to build on the mm -hmm. coastline. So you have to, to quit old houses to rebuild new ones because you have the protection law on the coastline, which is for all the coasts mm -hmm. in Europe, okay, um, that you until 500 meters cannot build anymore mm -hmm. any building. 1000 meters from the coastline you can build a hotel. Or in between 500 and 1000 you can build hotels or touristic uh, things but you have to respect a lot of other con conditions so if there is a ecological reserve place or ecological land you cannot mm -hmm. build on it if there is agriculture reserve land you mm -hmm. cannot build on it so the limits of building is mm -hmm. high and the demand mm -hmm. is high and the offflow so the price go up mm -hmm. On the other side, you have a lot of foreigners here on the Algarve, which sell every 15 years their house. They come mm -hmm. here with 50, 55. When they are 70 years old, they go back to the family because they want to stay by the kids, by the grandkids, and ever and or the life change or the health change, mm -hmm. etc. And they sell their house. So if they buy in, for an example, they have bought in 2000 and uh, in 1919. Okay, and they sell after 25 years the mm -hmm. house. They bought the same house for 200,000 or 100,000 euros, and now they sell the house for 800,000. Mm -hmm. The win is not staying in Portugal, it stays with a foreigner who goes away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, then the pound has changed. So there are a lot of things, but one thing we have to say a building square meter cost in Portugal is still in between 1200 and 1500 euros. Mm -hmm. per square meter building costs. Mm -hmm. So if I build on a ground which cost me 200 euros a square meter, I have still 1600 euros costs. Mm -hmm. So if I want to sell it in every country of Europe, a construction builder wants to win a minimum 30%, mm -hmm. a minimum. So I put 30% on it, I'm by 2000 euros minimum. Mm -hmm. And this is in the perfect way, on a perfect place, where I only pay 200 euros a square meter mm -hmm. for a plot. The usual prices are 
in between 300 and 1000 euros mm -hmm. it depends where you want to build them more close to the beach you are then higher is the cost mm -hmm. okay so for example villamora is in between 1000 1500 euros a square meter ground mm -hmm. building ground okay we we calculate always in building ground if you build there for 1500 the end cost is 3000 plus the quantity for for um for uh, tax and and for the the construction yeah. builder you are around about four thousand euros you cannot sell under three thousand five hundred a used property mm -hmm. so the prices in faro uh by um, a medium uh, on one of our biggest uh property websites in faro is by 2364 euros square meter mm -hmm. this is a medium but they do not defer in between old houses okay old apartments which need renovation and new buildings mm -hmm. so you you cannot put they they share it with the algorithm mm -hmm. okay they they make a, a middle cost but it's not the reality okay so for example Albufera is 2343 it's impossible okay a new a new apartment in Albufera is not less than 3500 euros mm -hmm. to buy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In uh, Al Jazeera, you have 2,096, which is extreme, because in Al Jazeera you can buy a uh, old house, for example, still for 1,000 euros a square meter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have in, yeah, the, in, you have a very wide range, a lot of outliers towards towards the more expensive and towards the more the cheaper one. The, so yeah. you definitely like the mean will defer as as you say will not give a good picture we would we would need to to use the median uh, the median yeah. average in order to get exactly to the number but more or less but and i think it's like it, it applies to a lot of re regions around the world you have you more or less and i think i, I really like the explanation and your reasoning on what in fact generates the cost and uh, what really like where you can buy and where you cannot and what you can expect and um so i really like it that you say you know we have like around abu fair around like 2000 uh, 2000 well, you say like 3000 3500 or rather 4000 for a yeah. property uh, uh, apartment Ajazur is also not abu Feira. we have to also like it, it's a different small town it's not as let's say on the golden coast as we have in in abu Feira. Yeah um that's why also more the surfer surfer side it's a little bit rougher a little bit let's say it's also not as lively so smaller smaller town less prices and you get everything like you can choose or you can for for, for everything what you want you get something you get an old apartment which you probably want to refurbish anyway so you will have to account for for, for certain for certain costs on this one I think I think one of the big, the, the most important things that uh, the people have to to share and to understand is one the building costs are always the mm -hmm. same if you build in Al Jazeera or you build in Quinta do Lago or you build anywhere else the building costs are always the same if you want a medium good quality or certification of B plus you need minimum 1,500 mm -hmm. euros okay? if you want high quality and you want golden uh, water uh, amateur yeah, of, uh, finishings yeah the most mm -hmm. yeah and the, the biggest uh, windows uh because the windows cost the money it's not the building it's the windows they cost the money and the and the bathrooms and the kitchen if you want a three meter high window and uh 20 meter long so the price is different than the, a normal window yeah. okay yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to 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 see yeah. that but you can in between 1,500 and 2,500 or 3,000 are the building mm -hmm. costs. 3,000 is very good quality, very mm -hmm. high quality. Mm -hmm. okay. 3,000 is in Germany normal yeah. building. Yes. And then you have the plot, and then you have to decide: or you want to have sea view, or you say sea view is not interesting because I don't want to pay 2,000 euros a square meter mm -hmm. building space square meter or i go to the mountains and i say okay i pay 200 mm -hmm. euros and then I the 1500 or 2000 euros of mm -hmm. building costs on it that's the decision that people yeah, have to absolutely. take absolutely um 
let's quick uh, change gears quickly towards um and i know uh, you mentioned we should have another session about it but i still don't refrain uh, i'm not refraining from asking you um a quick um overview on the taxes for digital nomads or for this visa scheme you said before um you talked about uh, about that before in faro there are a lot of people getting uh, or settling there um, we are a lot talking about visas with a golden visa i don't want to go into detail this this time but for other people living simply in portugal and um, saying okay the first step might not be um, directly buying the first step might be me being a u.s american settling maybe in portugal finding out if that's something for me because i have talked to various people now from the us and they say hey you know i'm definitely considering to buy but they have never been to portugal and what i say is like hey first work from here take your office to to portugal and i would like to advise them to say hey you know there's also this way of becoming a resident in a in a proper way um while while uh, while working and while finding out if portugal is something for you do you have do you know that do you have information about that well uh, you 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 i have information but um i'm not a tax uh, yeah. professional so please um if somebody decides to come to portugal and uh, ask about taxes uh, you have to to ask a tax a tax specialist mm -hmm. but what I can say in a, about about my my experiences is there are different rules or uh, tax rules at the moment. Uh, not at the moment; they are existing since I think now uh, 2012. Mm -hmm. The one is um, because of the um, the expat rules. Mm -hmm. When they come over to Portugal, they do not have a, um, any tax relationship to the Portuguese tax authority and they come the first time they change their living living place residency to to portugal they have the first 10 years they are free of income taxes which come from income which is made out of portugal or okay. pensions or private um, investment incomes they do not pay because Portugal says, okay, uh, we have that double taxing according, and uh, the people or the, the countries where the money comes from, they are taxed by the source, so we cannot tax it twice what is earlier Got taxed. It. Okay. But for taxes that you produce, for, for income that you produce in Portugal, you have to pay tax. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Perfect. So you have to pay all the normal taxes like cars, house, uh, insurance everything normal like every other citizen in, in portugal okay. then there's another thing that especially for for the for digital nomads if they come to portugal and they receive their income in portugal and they put their first residency in portugal uh they have a head tax by 20 percent mm -hmm. as i know if they didn't change it uh i don't know the new tax rules from this year because they were always changing but i think in this point they let it mm -hmm. stay so you have a tax uh, a head tax of 20 percent about your income okay perfect generally okay you go to the tax yeah. authority you say i have earned this year one million okay and the tax authority says okay 20 percent is for us that's that's it they don't ask you for have you had costs have you had 20 percent that's okay it. got it okay perfect um quick overview on your um on, on your business and also working with others if someone reaches out to you um other real estate brokers from from portugal um also other mm -hmm. real estate brokers from around the world um also investors um how do you normally interact and how how are you are you um partnering up with uh, with people from uh, from different uh, parts of the world f uh, within europe within within uh, within the us i'm always talking uh, with a lot of uh, real estate agents and they are always really and i think like more and more super interested in collaborating um both both across the ocean but also even mm -hmm. 
uh, on the peninsula or on the, on the Iberian Peninsula or across Europe. How do you normally handle this? Well, there are three forms how to handle mm -hmm. it because you have to to make the, a clear line of difference between one and another situation. The first is somebody who is broker but has no license of brokerage. Mm -hmm. Okay, gives me a contact for a person which I sell afterwards the property. I pay him 25% of the commission which Casiberi receives because he's a broker, mm -hmm. he's not a company. He's not certified. He has no responsibility. He don't pay pays taxes. He does don't pay his employees. He don't pay his any any costs of of the company. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's not a company. He's an individual person. I pay him 25%. Mm -hmm of commission okay by effective business mm -hmm. okay if, if it if it happens the second point is a normal sharing of the prop of of the of the commission which is imagine i have a colleague in lisbon uh, he has a buyer uh, he asked me for a property which we have for sale and I say, yes, we have that property for sale. Your client wants to buy it. Yes, okay, let's do the deal. You come with the client. The client is yours. You have to be responsible for all the things that are needed by the client to do. It's your part. And I have all the things to do because I represent the seller. Mm -hmm. So we share the commission 50-50. But it has to be a company. Mm -hmm. It has to be a really official, licensed, responsible real estate company. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the third factor is what we do usually with foreign companies, so brokers all over the world, but licensed brokers, mm -hmm. okay? Not somebody who does that as a freelancer. I, I call them sometimes the cur cu curiosity mm -hmm. brokers because they have no responsibility mm -hmm. afterwards, okay? But I have all the responsibility. Mm -hmm. So if it's a company with license, all legal firms working like a normal real estate agency and they are so far away that they cannot come with the client we share 40 60 so they get 40 percent for the client the client comes to portugal we care about the client from the first till the end we make all the visits with him we do all the the work that we have to do the partner which receives the 40 percent gives us a detailed profile of the mm -hmm. client what he's looking for location where you want to which is his uh, financial um his financial uh background mm -hmm. capacity uh budget all, all all that what is needed in normal in in the process mm -hmm. of of uh, filtering a client and understanding what the client is looking for and which is his capacity for for the property um so this is the third nice. form yeah okay so but all as i said again we are serious in everything that we do we are transparent in everything that we do and we when we make a partner according with a partner anywhere in the world or in portugal we comply from the first till mm -hmm. the end okay but under our yeah. rules perfect that's I really like it. I really like the, the the way you handle it, and it's super super important. I think to have exactly like this very transparent way of of also communicating this one, which allows, and we talked about that previously, which allows also obviously the entire real estate ecosystem to to flourish and to to really um, yeah to to really work, and uh, everyone is like winning. The client is winning. The the both parties of of the of the real estate and both real estate agents are winning in the end like you're making making a deal happen um paulo i really thank you a lot for this for this uh, great session um seriously i really appreciate that you took the time and guide us through along the entire coastline of the algarve um super super insightful super impressive i'm happy i also could share this while you were talking um, about the Algarve and about the coastline on, on Google Maps so people who are watching could could uh, follow. Um, 
now how can people contact you if they if they're interested to um, to get more details to maybe have even questions and uh, are curious now about buying something or or um, travel there whenever they can again they can simply go to our website my contact details are all there um, they can send me an email to pl at kaziberia.com uh, they can call me if they want um, but usually it's better the questions starting by an email so that I can respond to them as I'm sometimes very busy and I don't want that people think that I don't take their call only because I don't need, don't know their numbers okay so if they send me an email I will always respond to all the emails that I receive and my team uh, I have uh, lawyers uh, I have um, engineers I have uh, economists in the team professional translators so our team is wide uh, and and open for for everybody if I cannot respond to the question I can give it to one of my my colleagues but I'm always happy to to help people in any any way uh, so long that uh, it is a help uh, and it's uh, helpful for both Perfect. parts. I really like that you have this uh, this network um, that you really directly like have this inventory of people and of experts and uh, and and can um, can um, leverage on this one. Paulo, I learned a lot well, today. Um, thank you so much. I learned a lot about the entire coast. I learned a lot about um, the um, even up to Al Jazeera. You you gave us a very nice introduction about this one. You gave us an introduction and an overview on the prices, also on what determines the price in the end. You showed us um, also the let's say challenges with with a lot of um, tourists coming uh, to to Portugal and really uh, again increasing awareness of 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 the importance to be mindful regarding uh, waste and regarding um, respecting laws and um, and the nature and then you also gave us a very nice introduction on. A quick detail on the taxes, tax, tax, uh, tax overview uh, when when settling here, and then also your business and your business services um, plus the, plus the referral and the and the collaboration mode. Um, are there any uh, final words which you like to share um, today before we close up? No, I'm. Thank you very much. Um, uh, we said this time it will be short. If you look on the clock, we have again one hour and forty. I shouldn't think that people will go to the end of this podcast. <laughs> we will. We will not. Next time we will not even say that we are gonna make it short. It's fine. It's it's just us. Uh, w once we start, we don't finish. So you know that's that's it. No. So now, but but I. I My last. Yeah. My, my last my last word is uh, I'm always uh, happy to be with you in an interview uh, and I'm always happy to to talk to you about anything what is needed and uh, well I'm available anytime when you want perfect I'll put all the contact information to the show notes people can reach out to you and uh, Paulo thank you so much have a nice day and uh, we talk soon bye bye for now thank you bye 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 bye